I can hold them like a big baby. <laughs> they just want to be loved. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, oh God, I, I, I can hold them like a big baby. <laughs> they just want to be loved. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, oh God, I remember when I used to pick him up. Stop, Coco. This is Apollo. Apollo is the bigger of the two twins. Apollo is, well, they both are five months old. And I named him Apollo, and I named his brother Rocky because one of my favorite movies was Rocky. The reason that I decided to go with the Rottweiler breed was because I wanted a dog that was loyal and also a dog that could be a good protector. My neighborhood is not one of the best neighborhoods in my city, so therefore, you know, the rise in crime during the pandemic has went up due to people losing their jobs, due to people going through some hard times. So I wanted something that could pretty much keep people out of my yard and maybe deter a person from wanting to try to do a home invasion at my home. So this is Apollo. And when I got them, they were eight weeks old. So they were right at two months old when I got them. And they were so small, I could pick them up with one hand. I never, you know, I never imagined that they would grow up to be this big. I know they're gonna be some big dogs, but it just amazes me how fast they've grown and how fast they learn. These are some fast learners. I could show them something one time or teach them something one or two times, and they pretty much, it's like they can understand what I'm saying to them. Ain't that right? And I've always grown up knowing that, well, hearing the rumors about pit bulls, Rottweilers, Doberman Pinchers, German Shepherds being aggressive dogs, they turn on their masters, they bite people and they attack people. So, what I've learned for doing further research is your dog is gonna be the way you train them up. If you beat on them and treat them terrible and treat them like they're nothing and keep them chained up to a tree all day, of course when they get loose they're gonna be upset and have aggression. But if you show them love and affection and, and, and give them love and feed them right and make sure they have water, make sure they have everything that they need, they're gonna be your best friend. And that's why I spend a lot of time with my dogs. Since I've got these two, I try to spend as much time as possible with them. I try to touch them as much as possible. Um, I have a lot of clothes that I wear for the outside that I don't mind getting dirty. I have boots that I don't mind being dirty. So that way when I come out here, I can bond with them as much as possible. Now when they were small, when I first got them, I kept them inside the house. and. I talked, you know, I brought them outside once every hour to the spot that I designated that I want them to use the bathroom in. So, as you can see, Rocky's coming over here. He wants some attention. So I'm going to switch off. I'm going to put Apollo's big tail down and I'm going to pick up Rocky. This is Rocky. This is the other one. Rocky. Now he's smaller. When I got Rocky, Rocky came with his tail on, his full tail. His tail was not what they call docked. And that's when the tail is cut down, cut off or cut down. He had a, a full tail when I got him. So I docked his tail on my own. And you know, some people are for docking tails. Some people are not for docking tails. But as you can see, it came out fine. I like the way it looks on him. It doesn't bother him. I can touch his tail. He doesn't feel a thing. He doesn't even know that his tail is missing. But uh, Rocky is the smaller of the two. Rocky was the runt, what they call the, the smallest one out of the litter that he was born in. The litter that these two came from had nine puppies. And I got Apollo, which is the biggest of them all. And I got Rocky, which was the smaller of them all. So as you can see, I treat them the same way. I try to treat both of them as equal. I try to feed them the same. I try to wash them at the same time. I try to play with them at the same time. I try to spend time with both of them equally. 
and I want to let them know that I care about them. That's why I touch them everywhere. I touch their paws a lot too. So that way it makes it easy when I'm trying to clip their nails. See? And see, they don't have a problem with it because since I've had them, I've been touching them. And as far as people thinking that their animals will bite them, I, I always put my hand around their mouth. Ever since I had them, when they were, when I first got them, I started touching them on their mouth. You know, they'll lick my hand and stuff, but they, they know not to bite my hand. When they used to nip at my hand, I would give them a harsh no, you know, and I would, I would grab them right here. I would tell them no and grab anytime I was they did a behavior that I didn't want them to do I'd yell out no and I'd grab them right here when I grabbed them right here that's like their mother that's imitating their mother grabbing them by the neck like a disciplinary action like no and so the commands that I taught them were no sit lay and come but they know their name so if I call Rocky's name and I put my hand out like this, he automatically comes to me. I started doing that with them when they were at a young age and I would have treats in my hand and I would call Rocky's name and hold my hand out like this and he would come get the treat. Or I would call Apollo's name and hold my hand out like this and he would come get the treat. So now I don't even have to use the treats anymore. I can just call their names and they'll come. The basically, I wanted my animals, well I wanted my puppies, my two dogs, to be protective if I'm not here and also, if there's a stranger comes in my yard that they don't know, I want them to, you know, bark, check it out. You know, they're very attentive. They pay attention to everything. They pay attention to everything. And to be honest with you all, I used to, I was never into animals until one of my, one of my ex-girlfriends, she was looking around for a uh, a pet a small dog I forgot the name of the dog it was she was looking for but anyway and she really treated that dog like a human she would take it places let it ride in the car she would let the dog in the house and I grew up where here in North Carolina where I grew up most people didn't keep dogs in the house so I was kind of against having dogs in the house until I saw how fun how much fun she was having with her dog how much time she was spending with her dog and how her dog treated her and how her dog looked at her this is a way that keeps my mind focused um they're like my best friends i can come out and talk to them i know it sounds crazy but i can come out and talk to them exercise with them run around with them and they're just real cool they're just fun and and as you can see they just want to be loved any animal anybody has a pet cat dog bird a fish a squirrel if you have a hamster if you have a possum, whatever animal you have, your animal is just like you. They just want to be loved. They just want to be loved. Look, I, I can hold them like a big baby. Look, they just want to be loved. So show love to your family, friends, your animals. That's the key to a happy life. Spreading love, positivity, positive energy. So. I'm here in North Carolina. I want to send you guys some positive energy. I want to send y'all some love. Wherever you're at, drop down in the comments if you have a pet. Drop down in the comments if where you're from. Drop down in the comments and tell what type of dog you have. 